Hey guys, it's Bub here. In this video, we're taking a look at the next version of Windows 11, Windows 11 23H2. This is codenamed Sun Valley 3 and is expected for a release in later September or early October. This build of Windows 11 is currently available inside of the beta channel of the Windows Insider program. And today we're going to be taking a look at it, taking a look at some of the new features that come with this new operating system, and just generally taking a look at how it performs over 22H2. The first thing I want to point out is the fact that this build number is 22,631 compared to 22H2, which was 22,621. It only went up 10 versus the jump from Windows 11 21 H2 to 22 H2 which was 22,000 to 22 621. The first feature that we actually can't take a look at is Windows Copilot. I actually did a video on Windows Copilot a few months ago um, in an earlier build of the Windows 11 23 H2 preview. Um, basically what Copilot is is it is a built-in kind of like Cortana but better AI assistant that is designed to make your day-to-day -day tasks better. Um, it is able to interact with the system and web pages that you visit. So for example, if you wanted to tell Copilot, hey, change the system mode to dark mode because you didn't know how to do it, it would change the system mode to dark mode. Or if you were on a page and you wanted the Copilot to summarize that page, you would of course have to give it access to your browser. But after that, it would summarize all the content on that web page for you in a nice to read fashion. So it's basically like bringing ChatGPT with Windows integration. There is a new file explorer interface that I can't tell you if I like it or not. I don't think I do right now. Um, so here it is. This is the new file explorer. Um, tabs were brought last week, last year. So we have the bar up here, which has been kind of rethemed. It just looks different. The search bar looks different. Then we have this. This is kind of like our toolbar where we have new cut, copy, paste, rename, share, delete, sort, view, all that stuff. I don't really like this, to be completely honest with you. Um, as well as we also have like the panel over here telling us what things are. We don't want to sign in OneDrive. Um, it just looks more modern, but at the same time, I don't, I'm not sure that I like it. Um, so that's something new to kind of keep out for. Um, another new feature is that there is native RAR support, 7-zip, TAR, and GZ support. So rest in peace WinRAR. Um, it's built in to Windows. You can now unarchive and archive RAR files, 7-zip, TAR, and GZ files. You can now ungroup and group apps in the taskbar. Now this is a feature that I've actually never used in the past, um, but let's see if I can actually figure out how to use it because I don't actually know. I believe this is the feature so as you can see, if we open two file explorers, we can see that they open separately, kind of like how they would perform in Windows XP or Windows Vista. And now it goes back to that functionality if you turn that on. This is a feature that's been requested by many people. I'm not really sure why, because I don't, I actually don't like this. But that's it's a cool feature for some people, I guess. We're actually going to turn that off because, again, I don't like that. So we're going to go always... There is a new Windows Backup app, which I actually don't want to take a look at because I am excited for this one. So what this is going to do is this is going to back up all your folders and files. It's going to remember installed apps and pinned app preferences. Now I believe the only caveat to that apps thing is it's only apps from the Microsoft Store. So if you have any like Win32 apps or older software, this is not going to work there. Windows settings and preferences are also going to be backed up, as well as Wi-Fi networks and other credentials that are saved on your device. And this will all be backed up to OneDrive. So I'm very excited for this, and I'm actually really curious to know if there's a way to force this out through Intune so that all of like your client computers are managed and always backed up to their user's OneDrive. There is RGB lighting controls built into Windows. I actually, again, I, uh, I think this is it. Yep, there it is. Um, dynamic lighting, I believe this is it. Uh, use dynamic lighting, compatible apps, background light control, uh, brightness, and colors. Again, one, we're not activated, but two, this VM doesn't have access to any of my system LEDs, so that's why that's not, you know, kind of showing up. But it's cool that they finally have built in RGB control. There is a new home page for Windows, although I can't not see it. Um, not Windows. There's a new home page for settings. Again, I don't have it enabled through Vive Tools yet. This is just a clean install of 23H2. I would assume once it becomes deployed and out there publicly that this would you know, actually be a feature there. There are virtual hard disk settings that are now built into Windows settings. 
um, that was a terrible way but we can just we can create virtual hard disks mount virtual hard disks attach them to the system and things like that so definitely better disk management um, like if you wanted to mount a virtual hard drive from VMware I'm sure that you could so a feature here is that we have widgets with the option to disable the newsfeed and pin widgets now the question is I'm not actually sure how to do that so that's fun uh, but yeah it, it should be there I just don't know where maybe we need to activate Windows for that moving on there is a new Microsoft Store with AI features so I'm sure again this isn't enabled on here um, but Windows Store now has been enhanced with those AI features um, there it is AI Hub um, so yeah, I guess this will show you everything that uses AI again I don't use Microsoft Store networking improvements in the settings app so if we go to network and internet um, we can see that there are some new features and new kind of settings in here that were previously not here including dial-up where we can obviously connect to the internet via dial-up on our Windows 11 machine um, just just generally better authentication better not authentication but better better features here there's a new option to hide the time and date in the taskbar which I believe is I forget where it is Unrelated though, you can show the seconds in the system tray, which I believe is a new feature for 23H2. I might be wrong. Um, but yeah, you are able to hide the time and date in the taskbar. And there's updated nearby sharing interface with faster transfer speed. So if you're one of those people, one of the few people that use nearby sharing, that is supposed to have a faster speed because of the new interface that was built in. So this was a brief overview of Windows 11 23H2. Overall, just from my few minutes of using it, it just it seems more snappy and more responsive. But again, that could just be because I'm running a clean install of Windows 11. Um, but overall, I am really enjoying this. I think that this will be a good upgrade to continue Windows 11. Definitely not as big as the 22H2 upgrade was, um, but it's still an upgrade nonetheless. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.